What's the car that Citroen made in the early 1990s that looked a bit bland? You, you know, the one that showed Citroen had finally given up on making innovative cars and just threw in the towel. Well, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the Citroen ZX because you've read the title of the video. But from the lack of information online, it seems a bit like that. It seems a little unloved and contemporary reviews didn't exactly heap praise on the shape. But buried underneath that bland exterior is a story of a car that sold very well and in fact spawned another car that sold even better and had a whole second life that ended in 2017. In fact, if you count up all the cars that were based on the ZX, you get at least 10 million of them and it may be as high as 12 million. This is the never bland and always exciting Citroen ZX story. Citroen were rescued from bankruptcy in 1975 with some prompting by the French government by rivals Peugeot. That meant workers' jobs were safe, but Citroen were no longer masters of their own destiny. Peugeot did away with much of the Citroen quirkiness that had made their cars so innovative and charming, but also led them down the road to bankruptcy. In the 1980s, they'd use Peugeot parts to produce the Visa, which would become the AX, the larger BX, and the larger luxury XM. This had steadied the ship, but Citroen needed more than just three modern vehicles in its range because although the 1970s CX and GS and the 1940s 2CV were still produced, no one was arguing that by the mid-1980s that they were modern vehicles. So in 1985, Citroen kicked off the N2 program, a car that would slot in between the AX and BX that would take on cars such as the Renault 9 and 11, Opel Cadet, Vauxhall Astra, Ford Escort, Fiat Ritmo, or also known as the Strada, and of course, the mighty Volkswagen Golf. Like the Citroen BX and the upcoming XM, the N2 would be designed both by Citroen engineers and by coach builders Bertone, with both teams producing variations along the lines of a classic three or five door hatchback, but steeper boots like the Volkswagen Polo were considered like this design from Citroen stylists. After some deliberation, Bertone's design was picked for the final car. Bertone also worked on the interior, but their initial proposal was deemed too simplistic. The team would rethink the design, creating something more sophisticated while still hitting their price targets. But the new car would also offer a bit of luxury, such as electric front windows and sunroof, central locking, power steering, ABS, air conditioning, and leather seats. One novel feature was a sliding rear seat that could give either more rear leg space or more boot capacity. It would be adopted a few years later by Renault for their Twingo. The BX and XM featured Citroen's innovative hydropneumatic suspension. The AX would use a conventional setup, as would the new car now called the Citroen ZX. To improve the handling, it adopted the self-directional rear axle from the upcoming XM, and I'll let Brian Brown explain it to you. I'd like to show you what makes this special edition Citroen ZX so special. Program rear wheel steering. Now this system allows the rear wheels to steer slightly in the same direction as the front wheel. So when a lateral force is applied, the subframe here can pivot around one mounting. So there you have it. The reason the ZX takes bends so well. Oh yeah, did I show you the hydraulic dampers with asymmetric settings? Oh! Citroen would wet customers' appetite for the ZX in a most unusual way. The Citroen ZX Rally Raid prototype appeared in 1990. It didn't have much in common with the passenger car, but would beat the drum to generate excitement. In its first outing, the Baja Aragon in Spain, it finished both first and second. It would go on to win the Paris-Dakar Rally four times. The new Citroen ZX debuted in the spring of 1991, a ZX91 if you will. Four models were available at launch, the Frugal Bargain Basement Reflex, the Avantage with a few extra features such as central locking, sunroof, and that sliding reclining rear seat. Although the rev counter suggested something fast, in the UK at least it had the same Frugal 1.4 litre engine as the base model. On the continent, presumably for tax reasons, the ZX would also come with the AX's smaller 1.1 litre engine. Moving further up market was the Aura with a sprightly yet still economical 1.6 litre engine and more bells and whistles such as power steering and alloy wheels. 
If the ZX was Citroen's answer to the Volkswagen Golf, the top of the range Volcane was their answer to the Golf GTI. The 1.9 litre engine, the same one used in the Peugeot 205 GTI, produced 130 horsepower in the UK. That was good enough for a 7.8 second 0 to 60 time and onto 127 miles an hour. The same engine wasn't quite so hot in other parts of Europe though. The Volcane in the Netherlands, for instance, could only get to 60 in 10.4 seconds. But in UK trim, that made the ZX, if not the hottest hatch, then at least a legitimate hot hatch. Although there had been a five year gap since it ended production, the ZX effectively replaced the quirky yet innovative GS. Car Magazine ran an article comparing cars from 20 years previously to modern day cars, and so it was natural to pit the new ZX against the GS. The GS's 1.3 litre engine had similar performance to the ZX's 1.3 litre engine, and they had almost the same drag coefficient, Citroen being a pioneer in low drag cars. And the GS soaked up bumps like no other car, including the ZX, thanks to its hydropneumatic suspension. But when it came to a corner, the GS wallowed where the ZX zipped. Over two decades, the ergonomics and cabin noise had moved on leaps and bounds, as had fuel economy and servicing intervals and surviving a crash. The ZX was better than the GS on many fronts, as it should have been after 20 years of progress. But many thought one area it lagged behind was in excitement. When a car review uses phrases like dull looking and not a car to hold your interest, you know you're in trouble, and the same couldn't be said for the GS. The ZX design was compared to the Yugo Florida, also known as the Sana, that had launched four years previously, designed by competitor Ital Design. Although the press called out the cheap plastics on the dashboard and cabin noise, Overall, they liked it, especially the handling and fuel economy. It was a good, solid car and a great deal. The public agreed and sales took off as production ramped up in France and Spain. And although Car Magazine might have nostalgia for the GS's innovative features, all that mattered to Citroen was that the ZX got more sales. The BX was known for its diesel and relatively quick turbo diesel models. The ZX got a diesel engine at the end of 1991 with decent, if not stellar performance, but wonderful fuel economy. The press might have thought the ZX couldn't hold customers' interest, but Citroen set out to prove them wrong with a 2 litre, 150 horsepower, 16 valve model. It gave the lineup more excitement and allowed Citroen to emphasise once again the ZX's great handling. But calling it a coupe was maybe a step too far in marketing hyperbole. The three or five door hatchback already had great practicality, but sales could always be improved with an estate, so the ZX Brake launched in 1994. It launched just before a small update to the entire range, and when I say small, that really was the case. It turned into a game of spot the difference. I've read that the grill, headlights, and bumper changed, but if the headlights and bumpers changed, then I'm damned if I can see the difference. Inside, the ZX already had the option of an automatic gearbox. It would also feature electrically operated door mirrors and an immobilizer as standard. The level of equipment, even on the base model, increased and quickly put the more expensive Volkswagen Golf to shame. Coach builder Hoye worked with the American Sunroof Company to produce a convertible ZX that would definitely shake off the feeling that the ZX was dull. Although an intriguing proposal, the work to turn it into a production vehicle would have meant it launched when the ZX was ending production. It would also have competed with partner Peugeot's recently launched 306 Cabriolet, so the car never went into production. Seemingly permanent promotions and special editions kept sales zinging along, and in less than four years, Citroen had sold a million cars and production expanded to Uruguay. But ZX production lasted just six years before being replaced in 1997 by the Zara. Although the Zara had a new name and shape, it was largely the same car underneath. It's a car I have a personal connection with as 500 Zaras were sold with a Microsoft in-car entertainment system called the Auto PC that I wrote code for. Given that I had a hand in it though, you should probably drive it at your own risk. But this wasn't the end of the ZX. Citroen had done a deal to produce it in China, and by 1992, the company Dongfeng Citroen would be producing the Citroen Fukang, meaning prosperity and health. 
to drum up interest. That same year, the ZX Rally Raid competed in and won the Paris-Moscow-Beijing Rally. Initial Chinese production was just assembling parts sent from Europe and only 17,000 cars were made in the first four years. But after two factories had been built, production and local manufacture could begin and sales started to increase. The booted Fukang 988, developed with the help of Huye, appeared in 1998. It was sold until 2002 when a facelifted version appeared, the Citroen Elise. Much of the front was new, but the headlights came from the Peugeot 306 and the dashboard from the new Citroen Zara. Like the previous Fukang, a long wheelbase version was sold as the Elise VIP. It was updated once again to match contemporary Citroens as the C Elise in 2008. Another small update arrived in 2012 with the car ending production in 2013. But this wasn't the end of cars derived from the ZX platform. The previous models had been sold by the Dongfeng Citroen partnership as Citroens, but in 2009 Dongfeng launched their own version under the Feng Sheng name, the Saloon S30 and the Hatchback H30. The new shape was funnily enough styled by Ital Design, the people who designed the Yugo Florida that looked so much like that Citroen ZX. The 1.6 litre engine was the same one that had launched with the ZX 18 years earlier. A raised suspension, sort of crossover version, the H30 Cross appeared at the 2010 Beijing Auto Show and all models received a facelift in 2013. Sales continued until 2017, 26 years after the Citroen ZX first launched. China's always been a hotbed of plagiarism with scant regard of copyrights or patents, so maybe inevitably the ZX tooling will be copied and used by others. Geely produced various ZX-based cars under the Maple brand from 2003. Jiang Yan produced its own ZX clone, the Saga in 2004, and yet another clone appeared in 2005, the Li Fan 520 that was fitted with a BMW engine. The GS might have been a technological triumph, but the innovative car didn't prevent Citroen filing for bankruptcy. The ZX might have fewer engineering firsts and be seen by some as a little dull, but it got the job done. It was safe, reliable transport for millions, and the Volcan and 16 valve models were a hoot to drive. The platform was good enough that Peugeot used it for the 306, and Citroen used it for the Zara Blingo van and the Zara Picasso. With 2.4 million ZXs sold, 2.8 million Peugeot 306s, over a million Zaras, 1.2 million Bolingo vans, about 1.7 million Zara Picassos, and somewhere between half a million and 2.1 million legal and knockoff Chinese versions, the work to develop the ZX in the 1980s seems to have paid off. It certainly kept Citroen in business and its workers in employment. Not bad for a car that's been almost forgotten. Two years after the ZX, Citroen launched its hydropneumatic masterpiece, the XM, and there's a video about it on the right. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.